From ancient campfires to modern movie screens, the figure of the witch has captivated and terrified us for centuries. Cloaked in shadow, wielding unseen forces, the witch embodies both allure and fear. But where did this potent archetype originate? What are the roots of this power attributed to witches, both revered and reviled? Join us on a journey through time as we delve into the shadowy history of witches, from ancient practices to their modern-day resurgence. The word witch itself evokes a potent mix of emotions. For some, it conjures images of cackling hags with bubbling cauldrons, casting evil spells. For others, it represents a connection to nature, a deep well of wisdom and the power to heal. This duality, this blend of darkness and light, has been woven into the fabric of witchcraft since its earliest days. Our journey begins in antiquity, where the lines between magic, religion and everyday life were blurred. In ancient civilizations, individuals, often women, who possessed knowledge of herbs, healing, and the rhythms of nature, were both respected and feared. They were the keepers of secrets, whispered to be able to influence the elements, commune with spirits, and even control the fate of others. But as with any form of power, the perception of witchcraft has shifted and morphed throughout history, influenced by societal anxieties, religious dogma, and the ever-present human fascination with the unknown. In comparison, what's known as a prayer to Christians, witches' spells are just like a prayer, but unlike a prayer that only uses words, it also uses physical activation, such as the use of herbs. Let us begin to trace these shifting sands of perception, beginning with the ancient world. The earliest whispers of witchcraft can be traced back to the cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia. Here, in the land between the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, magic was an integral part of life. Cuneiform tablets dating back thousands of years speak of sorcerers and sorceresses who practiced divination, healing and protective magic. These ancient practitioners were consulted for everything from ensuring a bountiful harvest to warding off evil spirits. They were believed to possess a deep understanding of the cosmos, able to interpret dreams, communicate with the dead, and influence the course of events through rituals and spells. In ancient Egypt, magic known as Heka was similarly intertwined with daily life. Egyptian priests and priestesses were highly skilled in magical arts, using amulets, incantations and elaborate rituals to invoke the power of the gods. They played a crucial role in Egyptian society, advising pharaohs, healing the sick and guiding souls in the afterlife. One of the most famous figures associated with Egyptian magic is Nefertiti, the great royal wife of Akhenaten. While not a witch in the traditional sense, Nefertiti's beauty, power, and rumoured knowledge of magical arts have cemented her place in the annals of mystical history. Her image, preserved in exquisite bust sculptures, continues to captivate and intrigue, a testament to the enduring fascination with ancient Egyptian magic. As we move westward, both geographically and chronologically, we encounter the vibrant world of ancient Greece and Rome, where tales of witches and magic are woven into the very fabric of mythology and literature. From the sorceress Medea, driven to horrific acts by love and betrayal, to the prophetic pronouncements of the oracle at Delphi, magic permeated Greek culture. Greek mythology is replete with enchantresses and sorceresses. Circe, the nymph with the power to transform men into animals, embodies both the allure and danger attributed to women who possessed knowledge of magic. Hecate, often depicted with three heads and associated with crossroads and the underworld, was a powerful goddess who ruled over magic, witchcraft and necromancy. The Romans, known for their pragmatism and assimilation of conquered cultures, also grappled with the concept of magic. While they embraced certain forms of divination and astrology, they also feared the potential for magic to be used for nefarious purposes. The Lex Cornelia de Sicaris et Beneficis, a Roman law enacted in 81 AD, outlawed harmful magic and poisoning, reflecting the growing anxiety surrounding witchcraft and its potential to disrupt social order. 
Section 4, Threads of Magic Across Cultures. Today we delve into the mystic realms of Norse legends and African traditions. The magic of my ancestors, the Bokos, is deeply rooted in the African traditions of voodoo. It's a blend of spirituality and power, often misunderstood by outsiders. In the cold, rugged landscapes of the North, Norse legends speak of powerful seers and sorcerers. These mystics wielded runes and invoked the gods for guidance and strength. Both African and Norse traditions share a deep connection to the spiritual world, where rituals and ceremonies play a crucial role in everyday life. These practices, though diverse, highlight the universal quest for understanding and harnessing the unseen forces of the universe. In the medieval world, the perception of witchcraft shifted dramatically. As a healer, I used herbs and potions to cure ailments. But over time, these practices were seen as witchcraft, and I was accused of dark arts. The once respected healers were now viewed with suspicion and fear. Communities began to turn against those who practiced ancient healing arts. I was brought before the court, accused of consorting with evil forces. My knowledge of herbs, once a gift, was now a curse. This era marked the beginning of widespread witch hunts, where fear and superstition led to tragic consequences for many innocent people. Locked away, I could only hope that one day the world would remember the true purpose of my craft, to heal and help those in need. The witch hunts were a dark period in history, marked by fear and persecution. The infamous Malleus Maleficarum, written in 1487 by Heinrich Kramer, became the handbook for hunting witches. It detailed the methods to identify, interrogate and execute those accused of witchcraft. The church saw it as their duty to root out heresy. The Malleus Maleficarum was endorsed by the Catholic Church and led to widespread witch hunts across Europe. Thousands of people, mostly women, were tortured and executed based on its guidelines. The Salem Trials were a tragic culmination of this hysteria in the New World. In 1692, in Salem, Massachusetts, a series of hearings and prosecutions led to the execution of 20 people, mostly women, and the imprisonment of many others. The trials were fueled by superstition, fear, and personal vendettas. These events serve as a grim reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria and the importance of due process and justice. In modern times, witchcraft has seen a resurgence, evolving into a form of empowerment and cultural expression. Today, Wicca and other modern practices embrace the old ways, celebrating nature and personal empowerment. It's not just about spells, it's about connecting with the world around us. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more taboo stories like, share and see you next time.